August 1st is coming up soon, and it's your last chance to reroll for Tamarine as a new player, as their free two 5-star tickets are going to be gone soon. But for those that do get her, and are wondering why she's so important or how to build her, welcome to my guide for Tamarine. Tamarine is a fire soul weaver that has a very unique function in that she essentially has two modes. However, the second mode, idle mode, is tied behind her skill 3, which starts off a battle with a very long 9 turn cooldown. In PvE, this is fine since lots of the harder battles, like in Abyss, take a long time to defeat anyways. But for PvP, it's a detriment. She's the worst standalone Soul Weaver, basically. Hence, why Asaria was recommended to go alongside her, as Asaria has a skill that resets the entire cooldown of a hero to zero thus allowing Tamarine to enter idle mode immediately. And instead of being useless, she becomes one of the strongest openers in PvP, feared even in Champion and Legend ranks. Due to the ML nerfs coming up, this combo may get nerfed some way in the future, but for now, it is the go-to attack team. But for PvE, this is mostly unnecessary. You don't need Asaria as she still functions as the best Soul Weaver for it. Because, after entering idle mode once, the cooldown of her S3 essentially is reduced to 4 or 5 turns, so each other idle form after the first will be quicker to activate. Her stats are pretty irrelevant, so let's just hop into skills more in depth. Now since she has two forms, it'll be a bit tricky to cover them, so instead I'll cover normal mode skills first, and then idle form skills after. Normal skill 1 attacks an enemy healing the lowest HP unit on your team according to their max HP. Also lowers the cooldown of Shining Star by one turn. So each attack from her S1, which includes dual attacks or counter attacks, lowers her S3's cooldown. Normal skill 2. Heals all allies health proportional to the caster's max health. So the more total HP she has, the more she heals your allies. This is a very strong skill, as the cooldown is a measly 2 turns, so it ensures your team is nice and healthy every other turn. And this skill also lowers the cooldown of her S3 by 1 turn on use. Normal skill 3. She begins battle with a 9 turn cooldown on the skill, 8 after Molagor investment, so it's unusable for a while, but really, it's about 4-6 to six turn cooldown since her S1 and S2 lower it by 1 each use. But once you're able to activate item mode, she dispels all debuffs from all your allies and recovers her own health to max HP. So she can be almost dead, and after using this skill, she'll plot back up to 100% full HP. However, her turn isn't over, as she gets to go right into her idle skills, which I'll cover next. Idle skill 1 attacks all enemies, dispelling all buffs from them, and triggers a dual attack from your highest attack unit. This is very strong, however, keep in mind the dispel is checked by effect resistance, so it's not guaranteed to dispel if you have no effectiveness on your Tammy, or vice versa the enemy has higher resist than you have effectiveness. Also, the dual attack is by your highest attack unit that is current highest attack unit. So if you have units with attack buff on them, that may affect who dual attacks. And one last thing to note, the dual attack targets whoever you aim Tamarine's S1 at. So when you want to hit the boss, aim Tamarine's S1 on the boss. Or conversely, if you want to take down a mob instead, click or tap on them instead when using Tammy's S1, as you can still select the target despite her skill saying attacks all enemies. Idle skill 2 gives every ally a 2 turn attack buff, raises their combat readiness by 30%, 50% at max mola investment, and also heals the team proportional to the caster's max health. This one is the biggie. This is the skill that makes her go far above any other soul weaver, and it's quite literally one of the most powerful skills in the game. And with Asaria resetting Tammy's S3, that allows you to use this after Asaria and put your team ahead of the enemy easily. Combat readiness is perhaps the most important effect in the game as it determines turn order and a 50% CR push can push even slow DPS's to the front line. 
People often use this skill first when entering auto mode, as it does have a 2 turn cooldown, so you can't use it back to back. Her item mode does last 3 turns, so you can go S2, then S1, and then S2 one last time before reverting back to Somi Choi mode. Also, something to note, her idol form is a special buff and cannot be dispelled, so no worries there. And those are Tammy's skills. Hopefully you see why she's the best Soul Weaver in the game and why she's a must-have if you're re-rolling right now with the two 5-star tickets lasting till August 1st, which is coming up soon. For skill-ups, you absolutely want to save and use your Molagora on her S3. Lower that cooldown. It's more important than any other hero skill you might think of upgrading. Trust me. After that, you also want to invest and max out her S2 to get to that 50% CR, and generally it will give your team more healing. S1. Don't touch. <laughs> it's useless, as it's just damage, and she won't be doing any damage, nor scales anything off damage, so it's a useless investment. Molagor are precious, so only do S3 first, and her S2 isn't essential to max out early on, but ultimately, eventually, you want to max it out. Now, moving on to builds. Luckily, most healer soul weavers are basically built the exact same way. However, Tammy is one of the faster soul weavers, so the build that's best for Tammy is speed plus HP set. You want her to be fast so she takes more turns, thus lowering the cooldown of her S3 faster. Unity set is an alternative to HP for more dual attack chances, which again, lowers the cooldown. For boots, you want the main stat to be speed. For ring, you want the main stat to be HP percent. And for Ami, you want the main stat to be HP percent again. Her heals are based off her HP, so the more she has, the more she heals. Ignore defense percent for main stats, it's not bad for tanking, but you want to maximize her heals, so go HP. You can get defense percent on substats. For substats, an ideal piece would be HP percent, defense percent, speed, and either effectiveness or effect resistance. For Ami and Ring, it'll be defense, speed, effect, and resistance. For boots, it'll be HP, defense, effect, resistance. Because you can't get the main stat stat as a substat for those items. I mentioned before, her idle dispel attack is affected by resistance, so perhaps get some effectiveness on your gear to get it to at least 55%. Push comes to shove, you could go speed plus hit set instead to better reach that, though you lose the 15% HP from the HP set bonus. For new players, speed set is kinda hard to get early on, as is the correct ring and amulet, so just put all HP gear on her for now, till you can get those speed sets. Speed main stat boots should be on her too, eventually. Don't stress going all HP sets on her though. If you do get good speed main stat boots that are say crit set, like the Stormwind boots from Adventure, those would be good on her too, as completed sets isn't too important and what really matters most for her is speed. By level 60, you want her to be around 12k HP and 190 to 200 plus speed. For artifacts, in my opinion, there's only three you should choose from. Magahara's Tome is arguably the best, giving her CR after using her S2 in either form, thus allowing her to get more turns in. Wondrous Potion is the second best, since till she can use idle form, she has no way of dealing with debuffs for her or your teammates. And lastly is Prophetic Candlestick, which has a chance to lower her cooldowns by one turn when attacked. This is likely the beginner's choice since it's a 3-star artifact, and you can max it out pretty easily. Tamarine should be your lead hero if wearing this, and generally will be your lead hero unless you have a tankier unit that can take the bulk of the incoming damage. Despite being a healer, her bulk is weaker than the other 4 or 5 star healers, so keep that in mind. One last thing to note, she's also great for raid morale, reaching 39 morale and even one team of 42 of these commonly used raid heroes. And that wraps up the guide for Tambourine. She's one of the best units currently, and I honestly don't see anyone topping her anytime soon. Unless she gets nerfed, but if you're re-rolling right now with the two 5-star tickets, get that Tangerine. But that is all for me, thank you guys for watching, idle cheer that like button, 
Comment down below if you got Tammy, or what builds you're running for her, or even what content she's helped you in. And subscribe for more Epic 7 Epicness.